All right, in this part of the lesson, we're going to continue talking about decision-making uncertainty. And again, this is the condition that exists when probabilities can't be determined for the assigned future outcomes. And uh, today, we're going to look at two, two um, additional criteria. Uh, last time, we looked at the pessimistic, the optimistic, uh, and the regret uh, criteria. And so today, we're going to look at Another criteria uh, developed by a scientist named Hurwitz, and then uh, equally equal uh, likelihood, uh, which is the uh, lowest level of information uh, possible. So we'll uh, again dive in, and we're going to be looking at our, our same example. We're deciding on whether or not to invest in an apartment, uh, an office, or a warehouse. And the, those are our three decision options, and we, we can only choose one. We can only choose one. And um, the, uh, then we've also given three uh, states of nature where the economy is going to be good, fair, or poor. And then, of course, finally, we're given the, the uh, net profit or losses associated with each one of those decision and state of nature combinations. And again, uh, just for review, uh, the, if the economy is, is fair and we happen to choose the office, decide the office, then the return is going to be $20,000. But we cannot, we can't decide, uh, we can't know in advance what of which these future states of nature is going to happen. All right. So today uh, we're going to start out and we're going to talk about the situation that develops by Hurwitz. And suppose our decision maker, you talk to your decision maker and she says, well, I'm, I'm more optimistic than pessimistic, but I'm, I'm not completely optimistic. And then you continue with the discussion, and you're, you learn, uh, you can actually quantify that and learn that uh, she may be three times as optimistic as pessimistic. And so uh, the, then the question becomes, how do we uh, determine, how do we weigh that information? And so here's, here's the process that... Um, uh, a scientist named uh, Hurwitz developed. And called the Hurwitz criteria. We're going to develop this parameter called alpha. And again, it's a it's a, a Greek letter. Um, uh, let me put Hurwitz criteria back in there. And um, we're going to develop a this Greek letter, alpha. And alpha, the Greek letter, is going to be called our coefficient of optimism. It's going to be a measure uh, on the um, about how relatively optimistic we are. And the way that this works is we're going to be given a scale, and this uh, scale of alpha, and, and the, the alpha value of alpha, I should, the value of alpha will be zero if our decision maker is perfectly, completely pessimistic, and the value of alpha is 1 if our uh, decision maker is completely an optimist. So the question is, where, where on this scale does this coefficient of optimism lie? For, and for just hypothetically and for example, if this turned out to be at this point on the scale. Uh, this was our value of alpha, and it was uh, 50 50 percent, 0.5. Then, uh, then alpha 
the decision maker is just as equally optimistic with, as pessimistic. But again, this, this alpha value can, can float either up the scale or down the scale. And our, our question is to determine that where does this lie? And now we're given the information that uh, she is three times more optimistic than pessimistic. And, and um, uh, what, what I, what I want to do too is I'm going to go back here and let's suppose, let's suppose um, our coefficient of optimism Let's suppose our value of alpha lies here. Then without doing a particular calculation, this is our value of alpha. And because on this scale, our optimist is, the, the score for our optimist is, is one, which you hopefully will be able to uh, discern, is this value is one minus whatever alpha is. And if we call alpha the coefficient we will, what we'll call one minus alpha is going to be called the coefficient of pessimism. So that's that's um, so now we we know that she's three times more optimistic than pessimistic. So the question becomes, what value of alpha is three, what value of alpha of alpha here is three exactly three times larger than is in the uh, value of pessimism for our decision maker, and we can we can solve this equation with a little little arithmetic, little algebra. So this alpha equals alpha is three times as large as the, the coefficient of pessimism, and so we we're going to multiply through. This is three minus three times alpha is alpha. And then we're going to add three alpha to both sides. So the left side is four alpha. The right side is now just three. And so now from this, we can determine that alpha equals three fourths. So this is our value of alpha and a value of one minus alpha is one fourth. And indeed alpha is th three times larger than one minus alpha. Okay. There's another way to do this, uh, and, and uh, some may have reasoned through this. There's another way to look at this. This three times more optimistic than pessimistic, and the way that this could, you could look at this was is there's three parts: optimism, and one part pessimism. And so there's a total of four parts. And so if you can deduce from that that alpha equals is three, three out of those four to total parts, and one minus alpha, uh, as we already know, is uh, one out of four parts. So now the question then becomes, how do we apply that for the, to make, help us make our, our decision? Well, we know, we know now that given this situation, our alpha is here. Uh, 
is is 0.75 or three quarters. Our one minus alpha is 0.25. And now we're going to need to uh, use this to calculate the, uh, a value that's associated for each of our decisions. So for our apartment, we're going to weight the best outcome with our value of alpha, and we're going to weight the worst outcome with our coefficient of pessimism and calculate a weighted sum of those two values. So in this case, for the apartment, the best outcome is $50,000. And that's going to be weighted with our, our, co our alpha value, which is three-fourths. Our worst outcome is $10,000, and that's going to be weighted with our um, coefficient of pessimism. And we're going to do, when we do the calculation, we're going to find that this is this weighted sum is forty thousand is forty thousand dollars. So that and then we're going to continue that for each one of our alternatives for the office. The best outcome. Let me use a different color for the office. The best outcome is $100,000 and the worst outcome is negative 50. So we'll have $100,000 weighted by our alpha value of 3 fourths plus a negative 50 times one quarter and this turns out to be the weighted sum turns out to be sixty two thousand five hundred you can go back and check the arithmetic um, uh, that's 62,500 and then for the warehouse finally again I mean I'll pick another color pick, pick blue the best outcome is 30,000 and the worst outcome is negative 10 and so this uh, will wait 30,000 being the best minus 10,000 times one quarter. And when you do this arithmetic, this turns out to be 20, dollars So now the question becomes, which one of these decisions should we make given this criteria and hopefully you see you would, you would choose the largest so the largest of these values is 62,500 and so our our uh, decision in this case the decision best in the office and her her its value value or score if whichever you will is 62 okay. that's how we're that's how we're going to uh, approach and uh, the one thing that I do want to point out uh, before we go forward is notice that these 
values, let me use a red pen, these values are associated with the best outcome and the worst outcome. Now, there's, this is the best outcome, or worst outcome and the best outcome. For the office, 100,000 is the best and 50,000 is the worst. It's not the worst future state of nature. You make this decision in the weighting based on the worst outcome, not, not, not the worst state of nature. Hopefully that's, because in this case, had we gone with the, so the worst state of nature, the, the return would have been 15,000, but that's not the case. It's 10,000 is the worst outcome if you invest in that warehouse. All right. So we'll go, go to our last tool for making decisions under conditions of uncertainty. And what should we do if the decision maker doesn't have any information about which state of nature is most likely to occur and she chooses uh, to decide that, uh, well, I, since I don't know which state of nature is most likely to occur, I will assume that each one of those states of nature is equally likely. And remember, we used that term back when we talked about our rolling our dice. So what does, what does that mean in this situation that states of nature are equally likely? Well, in that case, because there's three states of nature, and if we assume that they're equally likely, then that means there's a one-third chance that their economy will be good, a one-third chance that the economy will be fair and a one-third chance that the economy is going to be poor. And then much like the Hurwitz criteria, we're going to compute a score for each one of these decision points, but now we're going to compute a weighted uh, average of each one of these um, Uh, uh, possible outcomes weighted with, and let me write it a little bit differently. Uh, so we'll have this, these values uh, associated with and weighted with these values. So we're going to multiply each one of these together. And then, and then we're going to uh, add the results and the results. So there's two different ways to calculate this. Um, and um, it, you can calculate it as an average, or you can do the, the long arithmetic. And what I'm going to do here is to um, calculate this as an average. So what, what I will do is for our apartment, we're going to add 50, do that again, 50 plus 25 plus 10, and then I'm going to divide that by 3. So this turns out to be, hopefully you can follow the arithmetic, this turns out to be 75, 85 divided by 3. For our office, it's going to be 100 plus 20 minus 50, and all of that divided by 3, which is 120 minus 50 is 70 thirds. And then finally, for the warehouse, it's going to be 30 plus, and these are these are thousands of dollars, obviously. 30 plus negative 10 plus 15 
And 30 minus 10 is 20 plus 15 is 35. So that's 35K, 35 divided by three. Let me redo this, divided by 3,000. And again, as before, you'll choose the largest. And of these, the largest is 85 divided by 3K, which turns out to be equal to uh, 28.3 thousand dollars. 70 divided by 3 is, well, it turns out to be 23. Point three and thirty five divided by three turns out to be eleven point seven thousand. So again, uh, this is the uh, computation, and the apartment investment is is the correct investment to make. And so our our decision. Then for the case where it's equally equally likely is decision to invest in the apartment and the score of weighted uh, the, the uh, return. Let's say average. is for that decision is 28,333, okay? And again, for each one of these, the other way that could have been, and I'm not gonna go through all of this, but you could have, for example, for the apartment, uh, you could have, calculated it this way as well. You could have said um, 50,000 times a third plus 25,000 times a third plus 10,000 times a third and of course, that'll end up be to be exactly the same thing in uh, 28, uh, 3, 3, 3. And so you could go back and check the arithmetic and then do the same thing for the office and for the warehouse. But we, of course, we'll get the same results that we did on the, on the previous slide. So now we've looked at five different ways to evaluate decisions under the case of uncertainty. So you may ask yourself, well, well, okay, so what? So the bottom line question is the following, what decision should the investor make? And this is a summary of each one of our approaches, the work that we've done. And if you'll remember that when, if we were optimistic, we'd choose the office. If we were pessimistic, we would choose the apartment. If we wanted to avoid regret, we would choose the apartment. If we uh, use the Hurwitz criteria and we were three quarters, 75% um, optimistic, let's say, we would choose the office. And if we were, wanted to consider that the outcomes were equally likely, then we would choose the apartment. So after all of that information, what should the decision maker do? And this is sort of a trick question because what I will say, first of all, is the one thing that you know for certain is do not invest in the warehouse. So that's, imp that's important information. But then from among the office and the apartment, which one should you invest in? Well, the answer to that is, believe it or not, 
I uh, don't know. And the reason I don't know is because it depends on the, what the decision maker wants to do. The beauty of this, these tools is that you can go back to the decision maker and say, uh, given these approaches, these are the respective recommendations <coughs> with the expected and uh, anticipated results uh, based on that approach. Uh, but since I and so to leave that information with the decision maker and let her make the very difficult decision, clearly the decision is going to be either the office, uh, either the office or the apartment. But on what basis is, is she going to make that decision? Uh, and I don't know. Are there other political factors? Are there other things that are involved? Are there things that we're going to say, well, I don't want to consider this criteria. And so perhaps the apartment uh, investment wins. But with this information, you can go back to your decision maker and offer her or him uh, d different viewpoints of possible decision, which is the power of these tools. All right, last thing that we're going to do is the following. I want to uh, give you the opportunity to uh, solve this problem. Uh, and this problem is out of the textbook. Uh, the table below shows uh, telecoms losses for supplier shutdowns in the case of the natural disaster at four different uh, locations uh, throughout the throughout the world and so then the loss of a supplier will adversely affect telecoms operations which is the best supplier for telecom to add use each of these criteria to evaluate the decision and so the first thing that you want to recognize is this is these figures are costs. These are losses. These are not profits. And they're in, they're in millions of dollars. So right away, the optimistic viewpoint, if you choose maxi max, you're going to choose the wrong outcome. So you have to take into, into account and the, the approach is you're still going to choose the best of the best. For the pessimistic viewpoint, the best of the worst. For regret, you're still going to calculate regret, although the smallest values are going to be uh, the ones that are preferred. And then the equally likely future states, you're going to choose the smallest value rather than the largest. So I'm going to leave this. Uh, with you, I do. I will give you the answers um, uh, for these uh, respective, um, and then I'll leave it to you. Uh, so, for the optimistic, the decision is Thailand. For the pessimistic, the decision is India. For regret, the recommendation is Philippines. And finally, for equally likely, decision is recommendation is uh, India values associated with these are as follows for Thailand uh, three million uh, for India the value would be 14 million for the Philippines, 2 million regret, and for uh, equally likely, India is 9 million. So go back and, and um, this is a 14. Um, 
So go back and, and work through these. And if you get these uh, solutions, you know that you're on the right track. And if not, uh, see me if you, as you, if you need help. Okay. Thank you. I'll, uh, next lesson, we will continue and we'll look at um, the cases where uh, you, uh, under decision making under risk, where you can assign probabilities to the outcomes of uh, likelihood of the uh, future state of nature. Okay. Well, let me know if you have questions.